Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today we're going to go over some really cool stuff. What I want to show you today is we're going to end up with a graph like this. Um, what I want to deal with is there's a lot of people that have issues with data, and then they run their data that they get from who knows where through process, and then they wonder why they blow up or they don't give them the right answer. Well, the thing is you need to be responsible with your data. You need to look at your data, make sure it's clean, make sure it doesn't have issues, make sure it doesn't have bias, skews, things like that. So what I'm going to show you today is how to deal with bias and skewed data which is a part of cleansing your data. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in a data set that I already have shown you guys before, the Kratom data set. It's available on Kaggle. Um, I'll put a link down below when I'm done with this. And uh, so I load that in, and these are the libraries I'm going to use today, Forecast, E1071, Read Excel, and Tidyverse. You guys should be familiar with most of those already. Okay. Uh, the Forecast one we'll use later on in this uh, when we're doing uh, an Autorema model. And the reason I'm going to do this, I'm going to show you a before and after why you want to change or uh, take into account bias and skewness. So first, let's load in our data set. And I'm going to walk through this from the beginning to the end. So as you see right here in my environment right over here, up here, it's completely empty. So let's get rid of this chart here. I'm going to remove the plots. So I've got nothing in there, right? So we're starting from scratch. So let's first load in our data. So let's load that in. It's a, not a big data set, 59 observations of eight variables, okay? And if we want to look at it, you know, you just click here, boom, there it is. And uh, basically, you've got week number, date, uh, or year, total sales transactions units, average temperature, uh, rank, and violent crime, okay? So let's go back to where we were right there. And uh, now if I run STR on it, you know what that does, right? It shows you its numeric factor, character, whatever it is. And obviously, you can see right here, they're all in numeric format, which is fine. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a density plot. But I don't want a density plot for each individual one. I want them together but spaced out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe in data for the data one data set that I have. I want to keep them numeric. I want to gather it. I'm going to use ggplots. This is a ggplot function right here. Uh, with the facet wrap and um, colors of blue and red. It might sound like a lot. It's really not. It's a typical ggplot uh, graph, but then you add gather to put in all of the columns that are numeric, and then you make sure they stay as numeric. So let's just do that. Enter and run, and this is what it does. Boom. Depending on, Now, if you have more columns or more items, it's going to take longer to do. And what this does, it shows me the density plot of each of these. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this one right here, units. See that? See how it's skewed all the way to the left? I could have picked rank. That's fine. But I'm picking units. This one you would probably use out of this units, transactions, or, or sales to forecast with, for instance. So let's take that. And then what I want to do is I want to further show that um, units is skewed. Obviously, I can see it here. But what if it wasn't that clear? What if it was more like the average T here? So what I'm showing you here is mean, min, max, and standard deviation. So we just run all, all four of these, and there's your values there in order. So 124 is our mean, 6 is our minimum, the lowest score or the lowest value, 801 is the maximum, and the standard deviation is 135. So what that means is if you take your mean, you add 135 to it, plus or minus, and that's where the vast majority of your scores or your values are. So that shows you clearly we have a huge distance between there and that 801. So that shows you it's numeric wise in, in measuring format here that uh, we have a very big skew. So next, let's go and take this to the next row. So when we're dealing with skew, we've identified the skew. Now what we want to do is uh, have a starting point, right? So we want to know how much is our skew, right? So I want to identify the initial accuracy with our skew. So I'm going to create a time series object, and we're going to use an auto arima, and we're going to come out with the AIC and BIC scores, because the lower those are, the better our, our accuracy is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare those here to down below after we remove the skew. So let's do this. So I'm going to do this one. The first one is, this is very similar to what you guys have seen in my... Uh, uh, forecasting videos where we show you how to make a time series object and do an auto arima. So the first one here is we're taking the data, data one, and we're taking the field units and we're making a time series object based off of that field. Okay. The second one is that we're doing an auto arima 
off of that time series object and putting it in a vector called fit, a time series vector called fit. Then what we're going to do is we're going to run the same thing we just did, but without putting it in fit so you can actually see what the auto REMA value is. We want to know, is it a, what are the PDQ values for it and what are the ASCPIC scores? So let's run these three. Okay. If I just run this one, fit and this, watch what happens. You get that. That's it. It doesn't tell you anything. It's up here, a list of 18. Let's go right here and run this, which is the same thing as if I ran this. It's the exact same thing. It's just not placed in a vector. And we just run that, right? And our auto is right here is 0, 0, 0. I can bring this up a little bit. There we go. You see where I ran it right there. And it's 0, 0, 0 with non-zero mean. So that means our PDQ is 0, 0, 0 for the auto rima, which is the most, the computer determined, uh, best, most efficient model for that. And our ASC is 749, and our BIC is 753.43. So I've got those both right here. We can also display this if we want. We just do this, TS display of our residuals from the fit. Lag max, I could pick a different value. I pick 30. Um, and the reason being is the vast majority of your lags are going to appear below 30. You may have some at 50. They're not as meaningful as the ones below 30 are. And then I put the main as the model of 0, 0, 0. So we run this. There we go. And we do have a lag there somewhere around 11, I would, I would guess. I think it's about 11 on both the ACF and PACF. And uh, But that doesn't matter. I'm not forecasting this. I'm trying to show you the difference between if I don't take out the skew and I just run, you know, uh, forecasting or I use it for, you know, whatever I'm going to use it for, or if I take the skew and deal with it and then remove it and then look at the accuracy. So we've looked, we've already determined that, that there's a skew and I've shown you the base of it, right? The AIC and BIC values. Now, what you do once you have SKU to deal with it, one is you can identify and remove the duplicates. So in this case, I've got, I'm taking the duplicated of data one and I'm placing it in duplicates. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to see duplicates only. If I have duplicates, I'll use this line here where it says not duplicates. Okay. If I, so that way I'm taking the duplicates out. So if I have duplicates, I want to remove duplicate values a lot. If you have used data that have had questions for me that have duplicate data, this is how you deal with it, identify them, and remove them. So I'm going to run these two. If we run just data two by itself, or you can look at it right here, it's got zero observations. That means we've got no duplicates, right? Okay. So next, so in the eight values or eight variables is the column name, just so you know there. So next... I've already identified and removed duplicates if I had any. I don't. So next we want to identify outliers. What are the outliers? How many of them are there? So this is kind of how far out you want to go. You don't want to remove too many outliers. So if you'll see here, I'm using 0.995, which is very close to once. I'm just using, I'm just removing the very extremes. You want to leave outliers unless you've got a reason for it to be in there. I mean, or to not be in there. So you want to leave them in there. Um, you only want to remove the very far outliers, okay? Because they can change your data. Now, there might be reasons to remove it, but in this case, I'm only removing the very far, very far extremes on either side. So what I'm going to do is I want to first see. I want to identify it while I'm doing it. So I've got par and fro. That what that does, it divides my screen over here into two sections, kind of like this down below. So we'll run that. Then what I want to do is I want to show you in a box plot, right? I'm going to show you the before, and then here's the, going to be the after. And in between, what I've got right here is it's going to subset the quant, the uh, data uh, into uh, by data one units. It's going to remove the area that's beyond 0.995 or below that probability of it. So what happens here is this whole line right here is what I'm going to be using. Okay, with the quantiles to to keep everything inside of that 0.995, and uh, watch what happens here. So if I run this, I've already run the par and fro. So let's just run these two, right? There you go. So I've got a box plot of before, and I've got a box plot of after. If you look at the top, 800 and 600. So what this did was it basically cut it off right about here, and then that's what you see here. Okay, so it basically didn't remove a whole lot of data. But 
it removed an outlier that it identifies being outside of that realm that I would want. Okay, so now if I had a lot of outliers, I'd have to look at this and say, well, where should I cut this? Where should it be a 0.98? Should it be 0.99? And then it'd be something also to look at later and say, well, why did we have these outliers? Was there a bad business reason behind it? Was there a bad process that brought us that data that was behind that? I don't know, but that might be something to review. Okay, so now that we've done that, the next thing is we want to deal with NAs, the missing data, right? That's stuff that can also skew your data. Um, so, or cause bias and stuff like that. So what we want to do is this is straight out of the uh, forecasting ARIMA model um, processes and videos that I've created. So basically first what you want to do is do a summary of your data, right? So in the summary, it'll tell you the very bottom of any of these if there are NAs. There are not. If there were, you would use this, replace with the aggregate or the mean, and then you would run the summary again, and it would show you that it's gone, whereas in the first place it would have shown you how many there were. You can also go and look at this and see what your values are again, numeric, you know, make sure they're all good. And uh, next is the part where you actually deal with the skew. So we've, I've shown you some things to help fix some and remove some bad data. Now we still know that there's a skew. So we're going to transform it. Now, there's different ways of doing that. You can do it with the box cog method. There's uh, exponential. And then there's also the logarithmic, log 10 transform. Out of all those, the one that's the easiest to do and the one that's more applicable to other data series or data sets is the logarithmic one. That's what I'm going to show you here. It's not as accurate as box cog, but it's close. It's very close and still quite accurate. Um, but the other ones, you have to customize them so much for each use, and you can't reuse what you've done in the first model to the second, or to the in the first data set to the second data set, which makes it highly, uh, in my in my opinion, uh, non-repeatable. So, what I want to do is I want to show you something that is. So, what we're going to do is we're going to first determine. Remember, we're looking at units, right? That's the field that had the huge skew. So, let's look at that and let's get the skewness of it. Now, skewness is how far away from zero, right? So whether it's positive or negative. So if we're plus one or minus one, we're at very high skewness. If we're plus 0.5 or minus 0.5 or under, we're at moderate skewness. If we're at 0.25 or minus 0.25 or less, we're at very little skew or light skew. So when we look at this, let's take a look at the, I've done the, the units. Let's look at the average temperature one. Remember that one was not as badly skewed. And you can see here it's not skews the other side, but it's a negative 0.34, so it's a light skew, or on this cusp of a light skew. So what we're going to do is we're going to use log 10, which is a very simple formula, not like the one above. Um, so what we're going to do here is just log 10 of that data frame of that column, which is data 1 units. And when you run this, it goes up in here, okay? But what I want to do is I could go in here and look at that and say, okay, where is it? Okay. But the thing is, is I really just want to run this and I want to get the skewness of this. So it doesn't matter. So let's just run this. See, we put that in here. That's here. Data one, log 10, data one, log 10. I could have called logarithm. It doesn't matter. And the skewness is negative 0.34. So we went from a 2.34 to a, so we went from a very high skew to a moderate skew. Now, let's just see how big of a difference it looks like, okay? So I'm going to plot this graph. So remember, now I put, by putting this in this log 10, right, of column of our data set, data 1, I'm going to see that now as a new uh, density plot when I plot all the density plots, just like I did before, in the same exact manner. We run this. Give it a second. There we go. So units is now down here. See, that's it. units has not changed. We never did anything to change units. We just used that to identify the skew in it, right? Now let's go over here. Log 10. There it is. Look at the difference. Now a normal distribution would be your bell curve distribution. So we're close to it. It's not quite. It's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than this was. So what that's going to do, watch now. Remember before I went and got the AIC and BIC values? By creating a time series and using an autorema, we're going to do that again. I want to compare this to that. So let's do it again. So we're going to run these two, which is creating the time series object off of our same data set, off of that units. But now remember, 
the data one has changed, right? We've made these changes to it. We've removed the outliers. We've dealt with some other things. Plus, most importantly, we've transformed the data or the SKU with a log logarithmic transform. So let's run this. Then let's run this, which is, remember, the same thing as what's up right up here. We're going to run the Autorima because I want to see the value. It's still 0, 0, 0, right? So it hasn't changed. But, ah, look, the IC is different and the BIC is different. They're lower. They're lower by what? Well, they're now 691 and 695. And before, they were do, 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 749. So they dropped about 50 points. And uh, 695, yeah, about a little over 50 points that they dropped. So that tells you what? That tells you that we now have a better, better numbers and a better column of data to use to do for the forecasting on to remove, to remove or deal with the skewing and bias. That's by the way, skew and bias can be uh, used back and forth a lot. So it could be anything. Skew could be um, you have too many people on the low end. In this case, with units, what happened here clearly. Uh, is that you have too many people on the bottom end, so like low basket purchasers, right? People that buy fewer items and lots of them. And if you're trying to forecast people, you're going to un, uh, you're going to be biasing your forecast based on that large number of lower purchasers. Well, what if you want to know an equal breakout of all the purchasers? So that's going to skew the people on the upper end by the behavior of the people on the bottom end because there's a lot, a lot fewer people on the upper end. See that? So that's why we do this in uh, data science. And then let's just do the end display here again. And there it is. And look at that. Now the difference is by doing what? What's the difference? We use the same model, but in doing this, addressing with the SKU and, dress, and addressing the outliers, the missing data, if there were any, there isn't in this one. Um, and... Uh, anything like that and the, the skew, look what happened. We now have values that have no uh, lag in either the ACF or PACF, so we're going to be more accurate, right? And we have a quick model that looks great, and uh, we have lower uh, AIC and BIC scores, so we have a more accurate column to use for forecasting here that removes the bias and the skew that would cause, if we use that units column, that would have drawn the values down to the behavior of those lower purchasers versus the rest of the uh, group. So thanks again for watching. I hope you found this helpful. This is very helpful for using to get higher accuracies, boosting your accuracies in all sorts of forecasts and forecasting models and data science. Thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to subscribe like and share and have a great day.